Om Aganati Marandasyanga Nangana Saraka Chaksurun Militam Yana Tajmai Sri Gurabir Maham Si Chaitanya Manobishnam Stapitam Yana Bhutare Sayam Rupakaram Yam Dharati Swaparantikam Vandayam Sri Guru Siyata Parakamanam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Sya Sri Rupam Sagaratam Sahagara Raganatam Bitam Stam Sajevam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parejana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Larita Shivishakan Vitam Sya Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinu Bandhu Jigapate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Jayatam Surito Pango Mamamandir Matirgati Matsarvasya Parambhoja Radha Ramada Namono Siman Rasa Rasa Rambi Vamsi Veda Karsan Venusha Nirvago Gopinata Sudhisanam Divyad Vrinda Ranya Kaupadrumada Srimad Ratnagara Srimad Sanishto Shri Sri Rara Shira Govinda Deva Prestadabhi Seva Manush Marami Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmani Taya Cha Jigati Taya Krishnaya Go Vindaya Namo Namo Mangalang Bhagavan Vishnu Mangaram Guru Raduja Mangalam Padiri Kaksho Mangaraya Tanohari Om Narayanaya Vidmahi Vasudevaya Dimahi Tano Vishnu Pachodhyatahe Om Mahadevi Chavidmahi Vishnu Padnicha Dimahi Tano Lakshmi Pachodhyatahe Maharakshmi Namastubhyam Namastubhyam Sare Sare Hari Priya Namastubhyam Namastubhyam Daraya Dine Tapti Kanchana Gaurangi Rare Vindavaneshwari Vishavanasute Devi Pranamani Haru Priya Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Dev Maheshwara, Guru Shaksha, Parabhama Tashmai, Sri Guru Ven Maha, Durgame Patimyan Dasha, Skarapate Gade Maru, Shakripa Sanandana, Santu Santu Sanambanam, Mukam Kavit Vakari, Hansavara Shmarane, Panga Girlanga, Dade Katarigane, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutare Shemati Bhakti Vedanta Shamiti Ramane Namaste Sarasati Devi Guravani Pachani Nirishay Sunyavari Praskata Deya Sarari Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Wisdom Wednesday All right Good morning, Vi. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Rob. You still have Kel with you this morning, don't you? No, Prabhuji. I dropped him off last night. Oh, okay. Super. Yeah, every Tuesday night, uh, we have a conference call regarding the affairs of the Salt Lake City Temple. Rob is uh, extremely consistent in joining that and extremely active. I made the statement last night, and I'm not sure what we would do. Without Rob, he humbly said, well, if it wasn't for me, it would probably be someone else. And I'm glad we don't have to go into that probably territory because, frankly, <laughs> I'm, I'm somewhat of a skeptic <laughs> in that area. If we have a good man, then I just thank Krishna for him. And I'm not trying to think of any other options. Um, also, uh, yesterday afternoon, to bring you up to date on the news, after we did this show, at 9 o'clock Utah time, 9 a.m. Utah time, 9.30 India time, uh, we jumped on a Zoom call, which had been prearranged with Chaitanya Charan, did a one-hour interview on the subject of relevance. He started out speaking in, a, in general terms about relevance, but I had intended on it to be a talk about how particularly to give a relevant talk at a Sunday feast to an audience. So eventually, after the first 10 minutes or so, we honed it down to that subject. I placed the whole um, file on our YouTube channel, Charu Das, where you can see it there. I'll probably make a podcast of it as well. And I may, I think I'll also post it on Patreon. Lots and lots of really valuable information there, especially the last three quarters of it for those who are uh, gifted with the art of communication. A lot of pointers there about how to sharpen your particular talent and gift and make it maximally effective for um, striking a chord in the hearts of a Western first-time comer seeker friendly audience. Recommend it very, very highly. 
Speaking of communications, that's the task we have before us today on this Wisdom Wednesday. Good morning, Brent's Join us, joined us as well. <laughs> Jay, if I didn't mention you before, thanks very much. He's got a little sunshine emoji coming to us from Phoenix, Arizona. As I look out the window here, it's going to be a nice day as well. September is arguably the nicest month of the year with temperatures in the high 70s during the day and 60 at night. Could, could not be a better month. Fifth revisitation of the 19th verse, 8th chapter, 1st canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Maya javani kacham agya doksham abhyayam nalakshya muta dusha tato nyatadara yata being beyond the range of limited sense perception. Oh, wouldn't you know the phone is ringing, but it's on vibrate, fortunately. And the message in the screen is uh, scam likely, okay? <laughs> being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of diluting energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer exact as, exactly as an actor Dress as a player is not recognized. We talked <clears throat> yesterday about how we cloak ourselves to present ourselves to the public in a way that we are not. This is called pretentiousness. On, an, on the same note, it's uh, d um, dislike by the Lord. He um, dislikes above, above all else hypocrisy. And of course, we gave the example of Marj Pritu, who was above any sort of hypocrisy at all, did not want to hear his followers glorify him for acts he had not yet performed. And on the other hand, contemporary with Marj Pritu was Indra, the king of heaven. Um, just to recap, Indra had done a hundred horse sacrifices, and by the dint of the credits he'd gotten from performing those hundred horse sacrifices, he was elevated to be the king of the heavenly planets, the wielder of the thunderbolt, and the lord of rain. So. Marj Pritu had done 99 horse sacrifices. He was in the process of doing the 100th, but Indra wanted to foil him. He didn't want anyone else to come up to his same level. And so he stole the horse, thus bringing to a temporary halt the sacrifice itself. Sacrifice cannot be completed until uh, the horse comes back to its owner after having traveled all over the world. So Indra grabbed the horse. And when you grab the horse, it's an indication that you're not submitting to the emperor from Delhi or Hastinapur who had sent the horse out in the first place. It indicates that you want to fight. However, Indra, he wanted to stop the horse sacrifice. He wanted to abduct the horse, but he was too cowardly to fight face to face with Marj Preeku. So he um, had a made -up makeover he disguised his uh, warrior-like uh, body as Indra, the king of heaven, wielding the thunderbolt. And in order to um, duck out of a fight of Mars Pritu, in order to dupe Mars Pritu, he adopted the mode of dress and behavior of a sannyasi. In other words, he appeared in the okra saffron uh, colored robes as an act of cowardice. He did not want Marj Pritu to shoot arrows at him. And he knew that the custom in India, the pattern of behavior is not to confront those who are in the saffron dress. The saffron dress is supposed to be an indication that you are renounced, you are detached from this material world. You want nothing in the way of name, fame, or to accumulate wealth. You serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You're conversant with the Vedic um, mantras. Your diet is pure. Your words are pure. Your actions are pure. So the saffron robe, up until the time of Indra, connoted all those positive things. And no one in the royal order would ever raise a finger against uh, someone who had a saffron robe. And that Indra was counting on that to be able to have his cake and eat it too, to be able to steal the horse, stop Maharaj Pritu from performing his 100th horse sacrifice, and at the same time avoid a fight. But Maharaj Pritu 
nevertheless was going to kill Indra because, not because he had any disrespect for people dressed in saffron, but he had, but remember, he's the personality of Godhead. He comes to weed out the hypocrites. And here is Indra as an imposter pretending to be a Brahmin or a sannyasi. And so for that reason, that's the exact reason the Supreme Personality of Godhead descends on the planet. And Indra, in his foolishness, stepped right into the bullseye. He thought he was deflecting the arrows of Maharaj Priku, when in fact, by becoming an imposter and making a mockery of the saffron dress and of the uh, highest classification of society, the saintly and learned Brahmins, he put himself in the bullseye. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu properly described the mood of the renunciate. If you're dressed in saffron or in any way describe yourself as a churchgoer, a God-centered person, a righteous person, you should not engage in religious activities with the idea of getting material gain. The path of religion is not for asking God to give you a better house, a better car, have your kids go to a good college, to have a obscene income. One dharma sya hipa varga The path of religion is not to get yourself further entangled in all of the things that cause stress, anxiety, and ultimately repeated birth, death, disease, and old age. God wants to extricate us from that dark well. It's called a dark well because if you fall into a dark well in a lonely part of the forest, you'll call out as loudly and as often as you want that there will be no one there to hear you. So those who have fallen in the dark well of family affairs and pursue those family affairs and even worship God as part of the domestic situation, but do so for material gain, for material acquisition, are not only setting a bad example for their kids and misdirecting them, but they're preparing the way to take another birth in the next life. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that the, the Brahminical class of men, the men who wear saffron, are meant to set a sterling example of detachment from the material world. Now, detachment from the material world doesn't mean detachment from everything. He specifically says you should become detached from matter. But how does that happen? One automatically becomes detached from matter the more one becomes attached to Krishna. <clears throat> attachment for Krishna equates to detachment from matter. It's called Param Drishna. Vishya Vinavartate Narashama Raja Piyamasham Param Drishna Divart. When you get that taste, soul to supreme soul, when you make that connection of the inner spiritual eternal self with your eternal father the one who created you, brought you into existence and gifted you with talents and abilities, then that pleasure, that purposefulness, meaningfulness and satisfaction puts to shame all of the so-called satisfaction of decorating this body with wealth and fame and surrounded by children. Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasha Jahishatam Aparnashiva Mandaram Loka Ranjanam All the material standards check mark for success add up to nothing more than decoration for a dead body. I was in Calcutta one time. They were taking a dead body through the streets on a, on a what do you call it, palaquin. And the body apparently had been ex-military. So the body was dressed in his old uniform. There were epaulets on the shoulders. He had a nice hat with... Um, um, guild work on the on the cap there. There were medals, medals, and yet he was going to be burned at the cremation place. So I ask you, what what's the value if 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 your entire life was directed towards getting a nice uniform with nice medals and recognition from society? What what is the ultimate benefit? That nice uniform with all of the decorations and medals and award 
is now inert, insensitive, and being carried to be consumed in the fire. Better you engage yourself in the service of the Lord rather than in the service of this body because you will survive this body as you've survived countless bodies in the past. And the devotional service that you've performed, the purification that you've achieved, even if it's not 100%, even if it's not perfect, whatever it is, Shalpam Vyasya does, Trayatema, 2%, 3%, whatever small or medium or great amount of devotional service that you've done in this present lifetime, you will begin from where you left off the next time around. Suchinam Sumitam Gehe Yoga Rashta Bijayate. The Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is God Himself, wishes detachment for all of His parts and parcels. But He's very clear that the path to material detachment is through attachment to Krishna. Now, the Mayavadis, the monists, the followers of Sankaracharya, they preach detachment from everything, including Krishna. They advocate a process of repression, not to eat, not to drink, not to have a wife, not to prevent, not to prove a family. Their posture is that everything is false, including this material world. Brahma Satya Jagadmitam. Only spirit is true. And everything is false. So they turn up their nose at the temporal material energy of the Lord. They miss the opportunity to use the things of God's creation in his service. And when you use what God has created, you use God's energies and turn them back to glorify him. Every RT we do, what's the, people often ask, what's the significance of the ceremony? You offer incense, you offer flame, you offer water, you offer a flower, you offer the chamara, you blow the conch. What is that? Earth, air, fire, water, ether. Ether carries sound, you blow the conch, you sing the songs. Earth, um, earth from earth fragrance comes, the incense and the flowers. You wa offer water, you offer fire. What you've done, you've made a complete circuit. Everybody knows that if you want to take advantage of electricity, you can't just go one way. You can't uh, metaphorically speaking, take, 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 God, give me, 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 our Father in heaven, give me this, give me that, give me that. Your life doesn't have meaning or purpose if you're trying to subordinate God to your petty self-centered desires, trying to make it a one-way street going from God to you as if you were the center of the universe. And God had nothing better than to cater to your childish, immature self-destructive desires. But when you take earth, air, fire, water, ether, the elements which emanate from the Lord, and you turn them back to Him, then you've got ACDC. Then you've got a complete connection. Then you've got the power of electricity. Imagine life without electricity and imagine life with electricity. What a difference. What empowerment one has with electricity. So one is disempowered, detached, for all practical purposes, useless. Even if you're a king, even if you're a prime minister, even if you're a multimillionaire, do you, if you have not retained or regained or uncovered your attachment, your connection with Krishna, it is basically Bhagavad Bhakti. Hinasha means zero. Zero. Decoration for a dead body. All material temporary accomplishments, awards are zeros. Now people think they're going to, life is going to be successful. They'll think they'll some find meaning at some magical by and by point in the future when they've accumulated enough zeros. Zero wife, zero family, zero bank balance, zero award from the International Rotary Club, zero recognition, zero... However many zeros you line up beside each other, it's not going to increase the value, the overall value. However, you put a one in front of the zero, then all of a sudden family is meaningful. All of a sudden career is meaningful. All of a sudden money has a divine, transcendental, supernatural purpose. All of a sudden your talents, your abilities, being connected, going back, not just taking, 
But giving back from a sense of gratitude gives one a sense of fulfillment and completeness that one cannot get um, through any other area of activity. Look at Indra. He had so much power, so much offense, the king of the heavenly planets. The demigods bowed before him. He had Apsaras, dancing girls at his beck and call. And they would go into the Nanda Nandana gardens in order to please his senses. He had a beautiful wife, Sachi, in addition to all the courtesans of the palace. And yet was he satisfied? No, he was simply petty, small-minded, though it was the furthest thing from Mars Pritu's mind. Indra assumed that Pritu was performing a hundred sacrifices because Pritu wanted to usurp the position of Indra. And so he demeaned himself. He introduced the king of the heavenly planets. Can you believe it? We're not talking about some small-minded, petty criminal. We're talking about the king of the heavenly planets introduced the cheating process. It was Indra, the king of heaven, who was the first one to falsely adopt the saffron dress in order to preserve and to increase his material assets. No wonder Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Shiksha Ashtakam makes a point of warning us, do not go there. The cheating propensity is rife throughout the entire creation. Even the king of the heavenly planets is not exempt. So by all means, do not go the way of Indra. Go the way of Pritu by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Namam karmani limpate name karma phalaspriya. The Lord... Pritu didn't have any desire for Indra's kingdom. He did not envy Indra's position. He did not covet the fruit of being the king of the heavenly planets. God cares not a whit for this material world. It matters not a bit to him. He has a far more vast and superior kingdom called Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. Now, interestingly enough, as God doesn't care for material success, gain, aggrandizement, neither do his devotees. By virtue of their attachment to and love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they get so much power from the Lord. When we offer our might to the Lord, the Lord transfers all of his benevolence he opens the vaults of heaven and showers favor upon those who engage in reciprocal loving relationships to him. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warns us off material covetousness, envy, which brings stress, anxiety, and rebirth. He says, Nadanam, do not aspire for wealth. Nadjanam, do not aspire for followers. Sundarim, do not aspire to be surrounded by beautiful women. Kavita ma jagadishwar kamai, mama janmani janmani sri bhava tad bhaktir ahaitui. Do not even pursue a path of activities for the purpose of getting liberation. You are an eternal servant. Anything else, any other way that you identify yourself or any other path that you strike out on, whether you achieve it through yoga, whether you achieve it through self-sacrifice, whether you achieve it through doing horse sacrifices like Indra, whether you achieve it through asceticism, whether you achieve it through mental speculation, or whether you achieve it through study of the scriptures, all of these, none of these other paths are going to bring you to the pure platform of devotional service because all the other paths are self-serving and the only path that's God-serving is Bhakti. So we don't serve God, certainly not for wealth, certainly not for followers, certainly not for women, and not even for liberation, not even for our own salvation. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, what I want only is the causeless mercy of your devotional service in my, in my life, birth after birth especially when one comes to the sannyasi, the swami order of life. One has to be extremely cautious. 
Suka vashe mashe benu yachen alukeya. The sannyasi's lifestyle is meant by definition to be above reproach, just like a white cloth. If you have a, a merchant or a warrior or a craftsman or a worker or a farmer and they have some fault, that's to be expected. That's to be expected. But the sannyasi is supposed to be like a white cloth. If you have a dirty cloth with spots already on it, nobody's going to notice an extra little spot, are they? But if you have a white cloth, even the smallest little spot becomes immediately evident. So the sannyasis are supposed to be like the white cloth. And if there is even the slightest discrepancy in the life of a sannyasi, what to speak of him being a cheating sannyasi who has adopted the dress in order to feed his belly and put money in the bank? What to speak of that? If there is even the slightest discrepancy in the life of a sannyasi, people will immediately notice and then psh, 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 the, 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 the rumor the gossip will go like wildfire. Because the sannyasis are supposed to live a spotless life of purity and to be above reproach, much respect is given to the sannyasi. People give to the sannyasis in charity. People bow down. They'll bow down to a sannyasi right there on the sidewalk in the street. Some people are shocked. They're aghast. What are these Hare Krishnas doing? They're bowing to a man on the street. <laughs> Personally, I, I'm not sure about bowing to a sannyasi out on the sidewalk or in the street in public. And the, I think in terms of relevance, which is very much in the forefront of our mind these days, that might be counterproductive. And anyway, we do offer respects. We bow down to the sannyasis. There might be more discreet ways to do it than out in the middle of Venice Boulevard. But why do we do that? And people say, why do you bow down to this man? I thought you'd worship God. If you worship God, how can you prostrate yourself before a man? Well, the sannyasi is supposed to represent celibacy. Even if he had been married, he's now left his married life. He has no more connection with his wife. He travels. And now his family is all of humankind. He gives up the smaller family for the greater family. Sannyasi has no privacy. I follow the Facebook posts of Indudun Raj. Indudun Raj was the one responsible for bringing the Sadhu Sangh here to Spanish Fork, Utah at the end of May. 1,500 devotees congregated here in Utah Valley. They rented 700 motel rooms in Spanish Fork and Provo. And from Friday evening through Monday morning, some of the best kirtan singers from Australia, from Fiji, from India, from all over America congregated and there was chanting kirtan throughout all day, every day, as well as Daruka from Dallas came, set up a kitchen or a parking lot and had amazing prashad. And all that was inspired by Indra Dun Maharaj. Then he's off. And within one or two days, they're having a huge program in El Paso, Texas. And then he goes to Poland, where every day for two months, he and 150 devotees, every single day in a different location each day, put on a huge festival of India on the Baltic coast. And then he goes to Mayapur, New France, with 35 devotees. And then he goes to Paris, and he goes out on Sankirtan every single day. Would you not, at the very least, bow down? before such a selfless, surrendered soul. He has no privacy. He has no private life. He's always surrounded day and night by at least 20 to 35 devotees. He goes out in the streets, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, spreading the glories of the Holy Name to uplift the fallen souls. There, there's, there's no, there's, there's almost nothing there that's not engage in welfare work for the benefit of all living beings. Here is a resident of Vaikuntha. If, in fact, if rather than asking why do you bow down for a person, once you find out the details of his life, how could you not bow down? That's the least that you could do. He's given up illicit sex. He's given, he's given up his family. He has no home. He has no privacy. 
Um, he travels every other day, which may sound like fun, but it's really not, take it from me, trust me. It's not fun to be constantly traveling, going through different si time zones, feeling jet lag, having your schedule always disrupted and having to make adjustments. None of this is fun, ladies and gentlemen. Of course we bow down to such a person. And of course, nobody should adopt that robe and take advantage of the good will that someone like Indra Dumaraj Maharaj has done to imitate him, to be an imposter only for the mean-minded purpose of filling one's belly. Sannyasis who are actually sannyasis, who walk the talk, who live the lifestyle, yes, at the very least we bow down before them. We give them money because they use that money for festivals and for sankirtan and spreading Krishna consciousness. We serve them. I was amazed when uh, Sadhu Sangh was organized here in Spanish Four. People said, you must, Chiru, you must have been really busy that weekend. No, that was a vacation for me. I'm busy every other weekend. But when Indra Dunaraj came here with Giraj Swami and Vaisheshika, <clears throat> uh, all their disciples were running around, just eager, intensely eager. It's sometimes staying, you know, we had... Uh, <clears throat> We use the outdoor amphitheater here at the temple for Friday night and Saturday. Saturday, um, But the weather forecast for Sunday and Monday was not good. In fact, we did have rain and hail on Sunday. So um, they realized that they weren't going to be able to have the outdoor program for the third and fourth day of the weekend. So the program ended Saturday night at 1030 on the outdoor amphitheater. Now, the next morning, Sunday, at 9.30, they had found, the disciples of Indra Dunmaraj had found an indoor soccer field not three miles away from the temple, 16,000 square feet protected from the hail, the rain, and the inclement weather. They had taken the copious decorations. Our stage was elaborately and gorgeously decorated by Krishna Marari. They had taken all of those decorations and, 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 and the stage itself, the stage itself was a mobile stage. They took our Festival of Colors truck. I'm sleeping during all of this. Took it over there. They unloaded the entire stage, set up the stage, decorated the stage with all the copious decorations vanished for. And when the devotees came for Kirtan to this new venue at 9.30, the next morning, everything was set up. The disciples had stayed up till two and three o'clock in the morning. And then Sunday, Sunday, the owner of the field said that they had a soccer game uh, scheduled at one o'clock. So the kirtan ended at noon. Within one hour, there were so many devotees. I was in the back of the truck loading everything in along with Joshua. There were so many devotees taking down, carrying stage panels, carrying side pieces, carrying struts, carrying legs, carrying pictures. Uh, it, it, the whole venue was taken down within one hour. This is, this is the inspiration. This is the kind of trust that you can put in a genuine sannyasi, someone who wears the saffron robe and walks the talk. Um, they, they, they are a constant traveling festival of Krishna. Babad, Vida, Bhagavatas, Tirta, Bhuta, Shrana, Tirta, Korvanti, Tirta, Ni, Shrantashtanda, Such persons, you don't have to go across the world to a place of pilgrimage where the Lord walked or where there's a saint and sage. You just have to find where there's pure devotees like Indra Nurmaraj and help them out. Donate, serve, do something to help them accomplish what they have in mind, which is to make Krishna consciousness available to everyone. Now, what a travesty. How can there be a greater travesty than someone who takes advantage, slips in under the coattails of someone like that and pretends to be a sannyasi, taking advantage of all the goodwill that's created and all the trust that's created only for the purpose of feeding their belly. Indra himself did it. 
the king of the heavenly planet. So don't think that if you're outside of Krishna consciousness, there's some other way to immunize yourself from such a cheating propensity. The only way <coughs> is to engage in Krishna consciousness under the direction of the pure devotees, to get their association, to see them firsthand, how they're straining themselves, taxing their brains and their physical bodies in order to promote this devotional service of the Lord, to extend the loving hand of invitation to the following conditioned souls. Long did I toil and found no earthly rest, far did I roam and found no certain home, till at last I sought them in his sheltering breast who opens his arms and bids the weary come. With him I found a home, a rest divine, and I since am of his and, and, and he is mine. Who is it? Who is it that shepherds the fallen souls into the open embrace of the Lord? It is the sannyasi, it is the guru, it is the spiritual master, it is the pure devotee of the Lord who has given up everything else, not just for the sake of being pointed to and adored and, and lavished honor as a great renunciate. No. Such devotees think of themselves, Trinata, Peace, and Echanatharo, as more tolerant than the tree, more humble than the straw in the street, devoid of all sense of false breeze, and ready to rest, render all respect to others. You know, these great souls, Kiraj Swami, Vaisheshika, Indra Dumraj, and others who I'm not thinking of writing down at the moment, they came here, they were here for four days, and they are just, say, true, what service can we do? What can we do to promote? the Iskon Temple. And I'm thinking, I should be doing service to you. And yet in their humility, they're saying, what can we do to help you in your mission in Utah? In fact, Indra Dumars at the end gave us a donation of $2,000 to help the Utah Yatra. Radha Swami was here in 2016 for the Festival of India. Radha Swami, as you may know, has maybe 25,000 disciples. They worship him. They worship the ground that he walks on. And among his disciples are some of the richest men in India. Multi, 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 multi billionaires. They come and they bow down to his feet. Does Radhanath Swami get puffed up? Does Radhanath Swami get arrogant? Does Radhanath Swami take for granted people's respect, their love for him? Not at all. When he spent a few days with us during the Festival of India in 2016, he probably asked me a, not less than a dozen times, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? How, what can I do to strengthen your mission here in Utah? These are the genuine spiritual masters. These are the genuine devotees of the Lord. They automatically achieve total renunciation, total disinterest, uh, in the things that materialists are so anxious for by virtue not of detachment itself, but attachment to Krishna adds up to detachment from material life. If you can't follow that standard, then do not think of taking sannyasi in this age of Kali. Because particularly in this age of Kali, not only are people not only are very weakened in terms of our resolve, our intellects are degraded, our lifespans are reduced, but there are so many temptations. There are so many faults, particularly in this age of Kali. Every billboard, every newspaper, every magazine. What to speak of the internet with all the dark, horrible things that you can access in private with the touch of a finger. It's better not to take up sannyas in this age of Kali because the provocations are very strong and our uh, willpower, our bodily and physical and mental strength has been much reduced in this winter season of the cosmos. Only an extremely exalted person who is advanced in spiritual understanding should even think about adopting the sannyas order of life. And no one should ever think of adopting sannyasi as a means of livelihood for some material purpose that is thoroughly condemned. In fact, in the Brahmavarta Purana, there are five things which are explicitly prohibited in this current age of Kali, quarrel and hypocrisy, 
Ashamena Gavalabam Sanyasham, the number one, Sanyasam Palabaitrikam, Devarena Shatod Padim Karo Panchavi Varjana. Offering animals in sacrifice is prohibited in this age. Horses and cows used to be in the ancient ages offered in sacrifices. Old animals would be offered in sacrifice just to test the power of the Brahminical Shakti, the Brahminical mantras. The old animals would be sacrificed and they would reappear. In new births, the mantras would have the power of rejuvenating them. And so they were not so much killed as actually rejuvenating. Begetting a child in one's brother's wife. We see that when Vijayatavira and Chitraganda passed away prematurely, Vyasadeva, their older brother, was called upon in order to impregnate um, their widows so that the Kaurava line could continue. And there are a couple of other things that are um, prohibited. But the number one prohibition in the Kali Yuga age is that one should not take sannyas because it's very difficult to maintain. I remember when I was Life Membership Director in Los Angeles, the Swami Narayan Temple out there in Whittier, and now they have a huge $125 million complex in Chino Hills. But in those days, they just had an old, uh, look, I don't know what it was, an old hall that they'd rented. So they asked me to go out there and give a talk to the youth on vegetarianism. And there were two sannyasis who were visiting America from uh, Ahmedabad. So I got to talking to them and I learned more about the customs of the Swami Narayan sannyasis. They're very strict. They're extremely strict. A few things I learned were when the sannyasis come from India to America, they cannot stay more than six weeks because America is so degraded that to stay longer than six weeks is to tempt your faith, to live dangerously. And so they have a rule. Sannyasis cannot stay in America for more than six weeks. Another rule is sannyasis can never be alone, must always be in pairs. And another rule, which to a Western audience, which is used to the free intermingling of men and women from very young ages, this will seem um, pretty provocative, I imagine. Another rule of the Swami Narayan sannyasis is that if they happen to see the face of a woman, even by accident, they have to fast from food and water for 24 hours. <laughs> so they often have to travel by plane. And when they disembark in the airport, of course, everywhere around, there are members of the opposite sex. And what they do is they gather around the, the greeters, the local people who are themselves householders. They make a circle around the sannyasi and he keeps his, he keeps his eyes down on the floor and they move through the airport, through the baggage claim, out onto the, and they pick him up and drive him away without his ever having. And, and again, there, there is nothing against women. There's nothing against women. Women are mothers, women are sisters, women nourish. Without women, we wouldn't have generation after generation of well-adjusted kids. But the fact is, that men are, men are like butter, they're extremely susceptible to the way women move, to the way women smell, to the way women look. So if you put butter and fire near each other, the butter will always melt. And so to keep things cool and calm in society, the Vedic system is that the butter and the fire should be at a reasonably safe distance. Okay, There's nothing against the women. It's the men who are the ones who melt. Okay. So if in moving through the entourage to the car waiting to pick up the sannyasi at the curb at the airport exit, he should happen to glance up and see a woman, he will then have to fast for the next 24 hours from food and water. So this is how strict the sannyasis live. And it's no wonder that we offer them respect. And it's a, it's a very, very serious caution that one should only accept sannyas, actually sannyas, at, at least of the Mayavadi kind, of the Mayavadi kind, where one tries only for detachment without replacing detachment from matter with attachment for Krishna, that's an impossible task. And so, especially in the age of Kali. So that kind of sannyasi, the Mayavadi sannyasi, 
is strictly prohibited in the age of Kali. But the type of sannyas, which Lord Chaitanya himself accepted, and which the members of the International Society for Krishna Conscious accepted, is a type of sannyasi where one dedicates iha yasya hare dasha manasha nikidashwara jivamukta, one's mind, one's body, one's words, one's life, one's privacy, one dedicates everything for the service of the Lord. Otherwise, that sannyas, that mayabadi sannyas, who tries simply to be detached from everything, including the service of the Supreme Lord, mistakenly thinking of the Lord as mundane, that type of sannyas has no meaning. We find those type of sannyasis all over India, simply loitering the street, calling themselves as Narayan, having given up all duties to society, um, ceasing to fulfill any useful function in society, loitering on the street corners, being degraded with their hands out with a false philosophy, which propounds that by accepting sannyas, by giving up everything material, quote unquote, one becomes God. That kind of a hypocritical sannyas is rejected by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All right. We are done today, out of time, to be continued next Motivational Monday. Let's see what we have here. Anjali echoes my, um, my imparting to you the rules of the Swami Narayan sannyasis. It's the men who melt. Yes. Thank you, Anjali, for your comments. Dianiti, thanks for jumping. We haven't seen you commenting for quite a while. When you find a devotee you trust and love, working all night is a pleasure. Yes, those devotees who stayed up till three o'clock in the morning, they, they had big smiles on their faces. They were so happy for the opportunity to serve their spiritual master. And imagine those devotees in Poland that put on a, they set up a festival in the morning festival goes all day. Maybe they catch a little sleep under the stage or something in the shade. I know what that's like. I mean, I, we, we do festivals. We do the Festival of Colors. We'll go to Las Vegas or Los Angeles, Riverside. We've been to Sacramento, Reno, even as far away as Santa Cruz. And yep, we set up in the morning. We meet the volunteers. We set up. The festival starts at 11, goes to 5 o'clock, and then we break down. So we do that. We do that. We set up, we do the festival, I'll be the MC, sometimes even the performer. I'll organize, I'll manage everything on the stage, deal with the fire marshal, the health inspector, deal with the sound men, deal with all the performers, perform myself, uh, announce in between things, and then we'll break down the same day. But we do not then do the same thing the next day. So for two months in Poland on the Baltic coast, Imdra Dumaraj inspires 150 devotees without any salary remuneration to do the whole thing day after day after day after day. <sighs> yes. Yes, Anjali has a lot of good things. She agrees with me about Indra Dumaraj Swami. Uh, she says that if she were a sannyas, she would have to let her hair grow out not hide her roots as she does nowadays. Because <laughs> the whole point is not to present yourself as a blonde when in fact you're a brunette, right? So don't present yourself as a sannyasi when you still have material desires. <laughs> oh my gosh, Anjali, you're back. We're going to hit like 50 comments today. We're going to shoot up like a rocket in the Facebook algorithms. They miss to use the things of God's creation to offer back to him. Yes. They do not acknowledge the value of God's energies. And they miss the opportunity to use those energies in the service of the Lord. Exactly. Jean Pranams Manasaganga, who's in the process of an art project involving painting the Ganga River. Brent by Bobby. 
Jay, thanks to all of you for joining us. And Rob, I again would like you to send me by email whatever phrases you've thought of during the course of this talk, but could you verbally share those with us here during the last few minutes of our broadcast? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, I came up with quite a few. I wish I wasn't driving so I could have written them down, but I'll be sure to take note of the ones I do come up with and, and send them to you. Um, but the ones I remember right now is live spiritually explicit. Don't be a hypocrite. <laughs> That's a good one. And uh, if you don't wear the robe, if you can't bear the load. Oh, I love that one. Don't wear the robe if you can't bear the load. Wow, right to the point. You know, I needn't have I needn't have spent the last 45 minutes speaking. We could have just covered the whole topic just with that one phrase. <laughs> no, Prabhuji, I wouldn't have been able to come up with that phrase if you hadn't been speaking. <laughs> okay, all right. Then it's a partnership. I'll accept that. And I'll be honored to partner with you in that way. Any more? That's all I can remember at the time. Okay. Um, if I think of any more, though, before I email them to you, I'll, I'll add them to the list. Okay, great. Yeah, if you can send those to me or text them to me, I'm going to uh, post uh, post this, uh, download it, and then post it with some captions and all right after this talk. So I'd like to include those right from the get-go. But again, if you're driving, just whatever you can do comfortably. Really appreciate it. As soon as I stop, I'll get them to you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Rob. And thanks to all of you for joining us here on Wisdom Wednesday. Um, we're going to get to work here with tourists and buffet and animals and just another fun day in Spanish for Utah. And we hope that you love your life also uh, wherever you are and that you're fully engaged in the service of the Lord. You may not be wearing the okra saffron robe, but we're all sannyasis who dedicate our lives, mind, wealth, and words in the service of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.